Hey there, welcome back to High Infidelity, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to the channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video. My mom knew baby wasn't mine, but kept her mouth shut plus update. Even though it occurred about a month ago, I'm still outraged about it. 26-year-old guy. My ex-girlfriend, 27 female, with whom I've been in a relationship since high school, cheated on me. She allegedly couldn't take the guilt any longer and informed me there's a strong probability the 10-month-old baby boy I believed was ours was really from another man. It turns out that I am not the father. I'm quite irritated and wounded. And more than anything, I feel like a stupid. We're clearly finished. I told her I didn't want to see her again since I'd moved out of our apartment and was now living with a friend. I'm working with an attorney to get my name removed from the birth certificate so that I can finally be done with them. I believe everyone has decided to confess their sins to me since my mother is now confessing that she knew the kid wasn't hers and apologizes for not saying anything. She was aware that the baby may not be mine since my ex was pregnant. My ex contacted her weeping and confessed everything when she initially found out she was pregnant because she was afraid I would discover I wasn't the father. It's one thing to have a cheating ex, but honestly, my mom? Feeling even more betrayed that she, of all people, would conceal this from me. The one person you're meant to have faith in and whose first inclination is to protect you. I still can't believe it. My mother keeps apologizing. She didn't tell me because she hoped the kid was hers and didn't want me to be upset. A complete, 10 months of caring for a kid I believed was mine, and she feels this was the better conclusion than I do. Getting a paternity test after delivery so I didn't waste all this time. At the very least, my father and elder brother are irritated by what she did. But no one will leave me alone about how I'm treating my mother. Everyone thinks I'm punishing her too harshly for this and she felt she was assisting me at the time. That is something I must forgive, but I'm not sure whether I'm capable of doing so. To be honest, I'm not sure what I should do regarding my mother. She's always been there for me, but they seem like things I'll never be able to recover from. Any suggestions? Update. The last two weeks have been very lengthy for me, but with all that has happened, it seems like an eternity. It took a long time for me to recover from my enraged state. When I broke numerous objects and went on a lonely excursion to clear my mind, I felt as though the world accepted my version of events. The assistance I've gotten here has been helpful. It's a good feeling just to be heard, to be honest. When I came home, I had a long conversation with my mother. I told her all I needed to tell her, including the fact that she chose to support a cheating liar over her own child despite her good intentions, and then I stepped back and let her say anything she wanted to me. All of this nonsense about wanting to have a family with my girlfriend, about wanting the child to grow up with a loving father, about not wanting to damage me is ridiculous. Then I informed her that I'd had enough of her. To be really honest, nothing she could ever do to earn my trust would ever make me want her back in my life or stop me from seeing her as a person I despise. Even if I apologized, she has died in my eyes. It is better that she knows why I do not want to see her again. Not with the way this has screwed up my life thus far. My mother absolutely disagreed with me on this point, but I just told her that if she is that desperate for a child, she could contact my ex-husband for assistance. However, none of them will be able to harm me in any way in the future. You can imagine some of the abuse I've received from other family members, but the minute I proclaimed that I was separating myself from them as well, the abuse ceased immediately. Only my father and a handful of other people are aware that I have changed, my phone number. The strangest thing about it was that I felt a lot lighter after I had that conversation with her. It took a few days for me to fully comprehend and accept what had happened. My father, at the very least, is there for me. He was there to support me when I was depressed as a result of all that had happened to me. Concerning the issue with my ex-husband and his unwillingness to seek out the biological father. That was a colossal failure of a show. Getting her to do this for me required a great deal of persuading. My question was if she felt that killing me mentally and emotionally wasn't enough for her, since she was going to battle having me included on the birth certificate, while all I wanted was to be rid of them completely. A few days ago she finally disclosed who it is, 
and she has vowed to collaborate with me in order for me to get my name removed off the baby's birth certificate. Because it was most likely someone we knew personally, I had surmised that the reason she had been so evasive about disclosing who it was was because it was someone we knew. Nobody in my family, at least, was aware of it, and even if I had a sneaking suspicion, it still hurts. The snakes in your life that you didn't even realize you had, it has an impact on your life. This is something more I'm attempting to absorb while it's still fresh in my mind. Trying to go through it all, and hopefully, come out the other side of it. Legally, it may not be a tough battle to win the case. Unless, of course, she changes her mind, which is very impossible to forecast in advance. All I want is to be done with them and not have to pay for someone else's kid for the next 18 years of my life. I'm hoping she doesn't because all I want is to be done with them once and for all. Please accept my apologies for the absence of a happy update. I hope you understand. At the very least, I've been able to identify and avoid the really toxic persons who have entered my life. To be clear, I already have an attorney on my side who is fighting to get my name removed off the baby's birth certificate. Story 2. Last night, I learned my wife is cheating on me, can't tell anyone. After 15 years of marriage, my wife and I were no longer as close, but we had a son who is four years old, and we are both amazing parents, and we are a really happy family in general, so we were able to go on. I was depressed, and I got the strange impression that my wife had been seeing someone during the past few days, given how distant she seemed to me. To convince myself otherwise, I told myself that the feeling I was experiencing was a misunderstanding. I went out with a group of high school friends yesterday and returned home at about midnight. My wife was getting ready for bed on the baby cam, which I checked as I stepped through the door and into the home. Approximately 10 seconds later, I strolled into my bedroom to change clothes and my wife claimed to be asleep in her bed. I kissed my child and May my way downstairs, and as I was leaving the room, I saw my wife typing on her phone, which I immediately checked the baby cam for. I was aware of what was going on at the time, but I didn't do anything but wait for her to fall asleep before examining her phone. When I was at work, I happened to overhear my wife's talk with a guy about how they couldn't resist each other and how they wanted to one other. When our child was born, my wife's libido seemed to have decreased, or so I was led to think and I was made to feel like a hypocrite for expressing my want for more. She didn't seem to have a low libido, based on the fact that she was mocking him. For the sake of brevity, I roused her from her sleep and faced her. She couldn't even pretend it wasn't the first time they'd met, and they just started talking without anything supernatural taking place. Since I couldn't sleep, I sat by my child and read the messages that had been sent to me by other people. I called the guy in the morning and instructed him to come to my neighborhood since I was familiar with the situation. Due to the fact that his wife worked at the same company as me, and that they had a two-year-old child, I was prepared to ruin his life. When he arrived, I was prepared to beat him, but he just walked up to me, trembling, and apologized. Given the fact that he didn't press it, I was certain it was my wife who had done it. In the end, I didn't hit him. Instead, I ordered him to F off and never come near me or my wife ever again. She sought to approach me and engage in conversation with me. I wasn't even furious. I just believed that this was where our 15-year marriage had ended up and I wasn't even blaming her for my feelings toward her. She was just stating that it was a solitary blunder and that we should treat it as such in our own lives. That is why I am irritated when she says that because I am acknowledging that something has happened to me. She should, at the very least, acknowledge the wrong she has committed. I can't tell anybody what happened because I want my child to have a family. All I want is for him to have a family. I have periods of feeling strong and periods of feeling. She is now putting my child to bed, and I am writing this while feeling as if I have been hit by a truck in the stomach. Regardless, I'm expressing myself to complete strangers to get it off my chest.